This is DIYs by Dar. I had an ugly duck that I transformed into a craft cart. This is a challenge put on by Corey from Desert DIY. And in the spirit of gift giving, we're to take and donate the piece or sell the piece and donate the proceeds for a really good cause. I had a 70s sewing machine cabinet that I wanted to repurpose into a craft cart. The first obstacle was just getting that sewing machine out. I then removed the hardware so I could take the main flip door off. Then I went ahead and cleaned it with some degreaser and I was ready to try and scrape it off. I don't know if I was still weak from being ill, but I really had a hard time getting this scraped off. So I went ahead and I switched to an 80 grit screen on my surf prep and that definitely worked a lot better. Since the surface had so many deep dings through the veneer, I decided that I was going to have to try to maybe do a faux top and then paint the rest. So I went ahead and started scuff sanding to get the surface off as well as any um, surface gouges that I could get out. Then it was time to fill and I did have quite a bit of filling even on the legs. Legs were quite dinged up. Time to sand. I needed to measure up uh, to make a bottom for the cabinet as well as take a piece of paper and make a template for the door. Time for the saws. Now, please don't call OSHA. This is what I have right now from what I have gotten from my father-in-law. Both of these things spin at the same time, so you have to be really careful. I make my husband very nervous. I needed to put a little extension on the other side of the door because when I flipped the door down, there just wasn't enough meat to hold that door up. This is the door lid and I needed to make some grooves so those little door latches could fit inside my door lid. I used a roto zip for this since I don't have a router yet. Um, I should be getting one as well as a scroll saw as soon as we get the garage situated and we can get my father-in-law's pieces there. I needed to cut out a handle for lifting and closing the door and the best that I could do was with the little saber saw. I knew I was probably going to have to do some more sanding but that scroll saw sure would have come in handy right here. I needed to also cut out some square notches on the bottom board because it had to go around the legs. Everything seems to fit really good. Now I have to figure out how I am going, going to uh, secure this lid to this cabinet. So I decided to use some brackets as well as some quick wood and glue and kind of uh, put it in those little grooves and put the bracket over the top. 
Um, after I have done this, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just made another wood block and put a groove in it and put that over the top with the stuff inside. It sure would have looked a lot nicer, but lesson learned and I know what to do next time. I needed to put a little extra meat on that door closure again so you can see the bottom of where that door is going to hit when it closes. And I conditioned the whole uh, interior that I was going to keep as wood except for the bottom with some Dixie Bell butter. It was a scent called gray flannel. And I don't know if they still have that or not, but it was really nice. Now it's time to go ahead and just secure that bottom board. Final hole filling. This was after I sanded it and it was ready to be worked on with my paint. I went ahead and just soaked the hardware in some hot vinegar water, put it back on my door, and I put this back together. This was my first mistake. The reason I did it was because I was going to fold the top and I wanted to have my strokes just be continuous going across the whole top. And that created a problem for me when I went to uh, put the polycrylic on it. Oh no! Oopsie! I went ahead and primed with my boss from Dixie Bell. There it is already. I used Dixie Bell's mineral paint in chocolate and added Dixie Bell's mineral paint and cotton and tried to get a nice light color. What I've noticed with some of the faux wood finishes is the base is usually a lighter color and this might have been just a little bit dark. And the other thing when using the chalk paints they're so much more water friendly. If you find that your brush is just kind of sticking, just spray your brush, mist your brush, and that will help get that paint going and avoid brush strokes for you. While that was drying, I decided I was going to go ahead and start painting the rest of the cabinet. And I used Dixie Bell's Silk All-in-One paint in the color Olive. This paint almost seems kind of like it has a gel in it, so you don't really need to use any water in it at all. It goes on really nice and smooth. With the chocolate color and some Valspar glaze additive, I made my first layer and put it on my lid. I immediately take a big fluffy old brush and start to wipe off the excess glaze. Followed by a small little plastic broom. That worked good, but I saw a big difference when I went, went ahead and I used a regular broom. Then I could really see the lines coming up. The problem with that was it was leaving all kinds of debris all over the surface. Even though I had cleaned all of these and they were dry, it was still a problem mainly with this broom.
can see the little specks and little debris from that broom left in the surface. So let's get out the sandpaper. Let's sand in one direction. Let's get all that junk off of there. Now my next coat was gonna be pine cone from Dixie Bell mixed with the glaze. And these are mineral paints, so they're water friendly. And it was about a 50-50 mix for both of the glazes that I made up. These were the two colors I used. This is my second color I went and put on with the Scarlet brush from Dixie Belle. Followed the same process with the big fluffy brush, wiping off your brushes or brooms in between to get any excess off. Then I went with my favorite tool, that whisk broom knowing it was going to leave little flecks of stuff all over the top. If anybody knows how to avoid this, please let me know. This is kind of what it left, including big chunks. So there is a way to get them off. What you have to do, I used a safety pin and just kind of start scraping it in one direction and see if you can get it to come off. This was followed up with painstakingly hand painting before I put my polycrylic satin on. And the first um, application that I put on, I used one of the blue sponges. Didn't really like it all that well. It was leaving some bubbles on it. second one, I used the Scarlet brush, which seemed to be worse than the blue sponge. That really left bubbles. So I had to sand it down again, and I went to the Dixie Belle foam brush. Yeah, they're a little more expensive, but I'll tell you what, it was really worth it. You can see how nice and smooth this is going on. When I turned the lid over, it was like, oh no. I had drips that had gone down and got hard, so I had to sand them down and try to match up the corners as well as the big hit right here all the way down that seam. That's why I said I made the mistake by putting that door on. I should have left it off. I used a really, really light finishing um, sandpaper and tried to lightly sand off that ridge that was all the way down that seam, and I had to try to repaint that as well. It turned out okay, but you can definitely see it, and it is what it is. I did take Rub and Buff and went over with the copper color all over the hardware. 
and it looked a little bit bare so I went ahead and got a transfer and put that on the front of it just to kind of zip it up a little bit. I always like to start in the middle and kind of work my way out for just that initial stick and then wherever I'm going to start to peel off I'll go down to that area and kind of concentrate there and when you're lifting it up of course if you see any of that transfer come back up on that sheet put it back down and rub it again be careful when you rub around the edges of your leaves because if you rub really hard you're going to leave indentations uh, in your wood It is appropriate to use wax over your decals for protection. So I just put a clear wax over that front panel. Now to put the casters on, because I wanted this cart to be able to roll. So you could take it wherever you needed it and here it is. Hey, thanks so much for watching you guys. Please like and subscribe. And I want to thank Corey for hosting this challenge. And Merry Christmas to everybody and a Happy New Year.